Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back. It's Maddie and Madison for Spectrum Art Creations. That's right, Spectrum Art Creations. Thank you so much for joining us. Today we are going to actually be reviewing a brand new product that just walked through the door. It is the new chalk paint line called Cre Creativa. I believe that's how it's pronounced from Minte. Um, they are there are 12 new colors plus a white, okay? So there are 13 available different shades or hues um, of the paints. Now, I can share with you a couple of things that I know beforehand that they had actually advertised, and then we're gonna go ahead and test these out and see how they work. We don't own any chalk paints, so we're super excited to try these out. We know that they are non-toxic. We know that they're lead-free, mm -hmm. water-based, ammonia free. Now, um, they say that they can be applied on to obviously paper, metal, plastic. You can stencil with them. You can dilute them. They are water-based, as I mentioned, so you can dilute them with water for splattering and other techniques. Important. Um, no, probably even on the gel plate. Uh-huh. If you have like a, if you have a card, you can ink it around it. That's right. It. Correct. Now, um, the other thing, the other feature that I really liked is that they are um, advertised as very low set. So we are going to open these up because we haven't opened them yet. And we're going to see if that is in fact factual. Um, we're also, um, we're being told that there is no primer necessary, uh, that they're very pr pigmented, even though they're water-based. Um, so that's great. That, that kind of sold us on it because I thought, I know that there's some cheaper chalk paints, um, not that these are very expensive by the way, actually it's a really good price point, but I know there are some cheaper ones and what happens is you end up having to do multiple coats. Not only are you using more product, but you're also spending more time. And if we can actually cut down uh, on prep time and also save on product, we're in, right? So we're gonna test that as well. Now again, these are going to have a matte-like finish, right? Because they're chalk paint. Um, you can apply them with a brush, you can apply them with sponges. Um, our daubers are all kind of dirty, so I'm just gonna be using some kitchen sponges to show you that, you know, the different finishes, because one should give us a smooth glide, the other one should give us a more textured um, type of finish. So we'll try those. Um, they also let us know that the colors are going to dry differently uh, than what they seem in the jar itself. So in the jar, this color is very, very rich. It's going to dry lighter. So that's another thing to keep in mind, that when they dry, they will get lighter. They'll lighten up. Um, and then, of course, they ask us to make sure that we um, shake them very well when we first use them, plus that we maintain the lids on tightly. And that's because, again, these are chalk paints, so they dry very, very quickly. With the dry time, obviously, comes the fact that you are going to have air getting in there and drying the paint itself. Oh, that is just beautiful. Look at that. You know, you know what, but reminds what they me were, of? Uh huh. That reminds me of you know when you paint the walls that looks like the walls. that's right it does kind of have that consistency um but we know it's going to be lighter than this when we actually dry it right um or when it dries forgive me now like i mentioned they ask that you know you make sure you have a good seal so always clean your lids before you actually close them and possibly even use some um so maybe um saran wrap uh, to actually help them dry. But let's take a look at all the colors that are available to us. Those are pretty colors. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and bring these up and then try them as we go. I will show, show you the names, share with you the names of the colors as I bring them up. And we're gonna do swatches. We're gonna test them on wood. That's what I'm gonna use for my paint chips. They said they can go on plastic. So we're gonna try them on two plastic buttons. I mean, these are just cheap plastic buttons. Um, they say they can go on metal, so we are gonna try them on metal as well. And again, I'm gonna do all of this without priming um, to see, hey, would it work out? And if not, we can, you know, come back and try with prime, but we'll try with that first. We're gonna try them on chipboard, okay? And we're gonna try them also on, um, they said, you know, plastic, so this is resin. We'll try them on resin and see how that works. All right, I'm gonna speed through. If you guys have any questions as you're watching the video, make sure you leave them down in the comments below, but we will come back for a recap at the end.
so I can tell right off the bat the difference between what is wet and what is dry. So if we look at, let's bring this one up close actually, it's probably the easiest one to see. If we bring this up close, I hope you guys can see, see those darker areas? That's where it's still wet, right? And this is where it's actually dry. So you can tell that this is very dry. And I mean, it, I'm talking about just a couple of um, seconds, a couple of minutes. It didn't take very, very long. Here are the higher areas. Done with the sponge or stippling brush. You can see where it's still a little damp. And then the metal is probably still the wettest, right? Because obviously, when it comes to metal, it's gonna take a little longer to dry. It's a non-porous surface. So I think so far the feather and the metal are still much darker colors. You can see that. Then the chipboard and the wood, which are porous and basically absorbed that paint right away, right? Okay. But we were talking about coverage, right? And then we're gonna test how permanent are they? So as far as color is concerned, with a very light coat, I completely agree that one coat was sufficient for um, wood, uncured, on um, gessoed or prepped wood. Um, surprisingly, I, it did fabulous, right, on the resin. I mean, that's just one quick coat. Obviously, I haven't done the sides or the details, but we were just looking to make sure that it had good coverage, and it certainly did. Um, on the metal, I'm very, very shocked. Um, will it be permanent? I'm not sure, but did it cover it? Absolutely. Uh, on the chipboard, again, it's paper, it's porous, it did awesome and add great coverage. On this plastic button, not so much so, right? I mean, it's actually still, yeah, it's still wet. Um, it's just not going anywhere. And even I tried on the back as I figure maybe it's flatter, but you know, I mean, it had no coverage, as you can tell. Maybe it might be good for making it look kind of, you know, um, shabby, you know, like that distressed shabby look. That could possibly work for that. And maybe even one of the darker colors um, would do a little bit better. But again, um, I would say that that is definitely not something that I would do without gessoing or uh, prepping the surface. All right, now we're going to let this uh, finish drying and um, I'm sure we can dry this because I started to dry them and then I stopped because I realized, well, you know, let's test it without dry. Oh yeah, that, that dried in two seconds. So, oh, that is so pretty and it's such a flat, chalky finish. All right, we're going to test, um, do the other swatches. I'm only going to do them, um, I'm only going to do the wood pieces in the other one so I could have the swatches. These I wanted to test more than anything for coverage and also for um, how permanent it would be. So I'm gonna set these off to the side and let them dry on their own. I'm not gonna mess with them. And instead we're gonna do swatches for all the other colors. And then, and I actually, I like this whole sponging, you know, stippling technique. I love the body that it gives it. But you know what, we could do, we could do both. We could do a brush side and we could do a sponge side and then I'll come back with some swatches, okay?
the white is definitely much thicker, meaning they probably had to add more pigment to it because and more binders because it's white, right? So I can tell that right off the bat when I was trying to shake it the first time, it felt a lot heavier and a lot plumpier. Um, so if you notice, I just went ahead and also scraped that it. it could have also settled more in the travel, you know, because remember these are coming from Poland. So that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And this was the worst brush I could have used. This brush is so dry that it actually left a bunch of color. I mean, streaks on it, but that's okay. Because you know what, we're after the color swatches, not so much the perfection. Now you can tell right off the bat, and look at the spatula, it's already drying. <laughs> so I better get that clean. But you can tell how quickly, I mean, it hasn't taken me, but minutes to do all of these swatches. And I can tell you right off the bat that you can see the difference where it's dried and where it's drying. You see that? I saw it really well on the brown too, see that? So, I mean, they dry really quick, but even, nevertheless, I'm gonna dry them. Oops. I'm gonna dry this side of them. Then I'm gonna sponge the other side. See how light that is right there? I'm gonna sponge the other side so we can have texture, swatch on one side, and then just the regular brush on the other side. We can look at both sides and know how it's gonna work. And by then, these should be dry and we can test them and see how well they held up. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, if you notice, I have been dipping my finger and creating a little dot up at the top. And that just helps me to know what color is, which color is which, especially if I have them in a drawer or if I'm working with them like this and I'm standing up, right? I don't want to keep doing it this to look on the side, mm -hmm. I can see my colors right up at the mm -hmm. top. I probably will also come back in with a marker, a permanent marker at one point in time when I am done playing with these, maybe a Sharpie, a very thin one, and actually write the names on the lids as well. So then that way I have the names up top as well if I need to refer to which color I need. All right, let's dry these and we'll be right back with the other side already sponged um, and we'll test those. We'll be right back. And here are the final swatches. Aren't those pretty? They have the shabbiest, softest colors ever. Um, they dried very, very well. Whether we, and some of them actually are still a little damp. You can see the difference in color there where it's still a little damp, but um, both had great coverage, whether we did the uh, stippling or whether we did the brush. Um, I like both sides equally. This is going to be forest. This one is anthracite. By the way, anthracite is a coal, a type of coal. I think it's like the purest form of coal um, out there, I believe. Look at that one. That one was, by the way, anthracite. This is rosebud. This one is peach. And you see the color difference between the two, peach and rose. I hope you do. I know the lights do not help. This is aqua. Gorgeous color, right? This is lemon. This one is breeze, which is like the softest gray, blue gray. Um, almost like when the sky is going to be stormy, you still have that little tinge of, of blue, but very little um, mixed with gray, right? This one is sky. And again, see, you can see the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. This is tomato or tomato, <laughs> depending on where you're from, right? Beautiful color. I love that one. It's a red, but it's not like a fire engine red. It's just this super soft vintage um, red. This one is lilac. And again, see the three together. They're so pretty. They play so nice. All the colors play very nicely. Oops. This one is sand. And again, I just kind of 
put them on these pieces of wood. I haven't even finished the sides, but I just want to kind of show you. This one is, um, oh, I didn't make this one. This one is there. I can't tell now. I covered it with paint. Oopsie. I will put, I think it is, I'll put the name somewhere here on screen. And then, of course, white, right? Beautiful. And and both finishes are amazing. Okay, so now these have had some time to dry. So here we go. Moment of truth. We know that chipboard is going to hold because it's paper. Yeah, I can rub that and scratch it in. No worries. I can grab the... Um, Oh Lord, I just went blank. And the resin, and yep, it's holding even with my nails. So awesome. And then the metal, oh, that might still be wet. That's taking a little bit longer. Oh, goody. Okay. Wow. Okay, I'm impressed. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, I can see I get if I buff it a lot, I can see a little bit I just scratched. So, but I would have to claw it basically. That's pretty good. If you're just going to be placing this in an album or on a project, a box or something, um, definitely it wouldn't be an issue. Oh, you know what we could do? Mm -mm -mm. And forgive me, my camera's so dark. It doesn't like the white, unfortunately. So let me, let me remove these. Now it stayed up there. Oh, there we go. Much better. Okay, so um, one thing that if, if you're going to be putting it on something that's going to have a lot of wear, I probably would seal it on the metal. I don't, I feel pretty confident. No, I even feel, well, I had to claw it. Um, you know what? We can use our, where is the, I was just working with it, the clear wax. I bet you the clear wax would actually help to seal this quite nicely. Oh, you know what? Before we do that, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's um, antique it some more. Let's do firewood. Let's antique it and see what happens. Let's see how these two play together. And then we'll be done for now, right? Until we come back. Oh, that is so pretty. That is so pretty. Very nice. It, it just went on there like butter. It just, it was a glide. Look at how shabby the stress that looks. Can you stand it? That is awesome. Okay. Magic. I love it when magic happens. And that will actually help seal it too, because that is wax, of course, right? It's just tinted wax, but it's still wax. Where's my hand? Let's do, um, let's do one of the new... One of the new, ma yeah, let's do mahogany. These are the new um, antiquing waxes, and that would be perfect because they already look kind of, you know, these colors look um, antique or vintage. And let me um, find something to kind of dab off on. Oh, so cool. All right, that's pretty neat, guys. Oh, that dog is panting. Madison went outside and was running around with the dog, and she is thirsty. Did you give her some water? Yeah. Good deal. Good he job, honey. He didn't almost call it. That is so... Oh, like look at that. Like oh, that, that is so neat. Very, very neat. Well, Let's neat, do right? it on the feather. That is super stinking neat, Madison. It is, isn't it? It is. They play so well together. Now, again, I haven't even looked. I mean, I never even color the sides. I just want to see what it looks you, like. You guys need to try this. It looks like it's going to have to be one of my tasks for 2021. Or 2022. For 2022, it's yeah. one of your play with toys. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Beautiful. And again, if I was... um. If I wanted to really feel confident about this piece, although it's got wax on it right now, mm -hmm. I probably would come back with some clear wax and just make sure it's it's sealed. That's it. And mm -hmm. it's not going anywhere. It is. But now it's we know they play quite well. Mm -hmm. They stay in place. Yep, they're staying in place. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I love it. I hope you guys did as well. I hope we all learned together today. 
um, more about <laughs> the brand new, bless you, brand new um, <laughs> colors from Minte, the chalk yeah. paints. And, um, and then if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments down below. I'm also going to link these to our online store. If you've never yeah. vis visited our online store, please do so. We have um, a full store, which is spectrumartcreations.com. And we also have an Etsy store, and I'll leave that link mm -hmm. down below as well. Now, also remember that just because you don't see it doesn't mean we don't have it. We just don't have the ability to upload things as quickly as they come in, okay? Or even stuff that has, um, like, paper lines and stuff. We have hundreds of paper lines, guys whether it's Minte, Graphic 45, Samparia, Chow Bella, ITD, um, Peon. I mean, we have pads from all over the world, from Sweden to Poland to um, France. Just feel free to always email us and ask us. And um, Acha, we have it. And if we don't have it, we can definitely bring it in. So I hope you guys will check out the online store. Once again, thank you for joining us. And if you have thank any you. questions... Uh, or comments. We'd love to hear some feedback, right? Because that keeps us going doing uh, product reviews for you guys as well and tutorials. Thank you so much. Have a blessed Thank day. You. Bye. Bye-bye.